Okay, so we made a plate. This is similar to what we have under Hank's 53 Ford. This is just a resto modded truck. This is not going back to factory exact or anything. So I made a plate and I studded it, welded the studs, cleaned everything up, and it's ready to go in the truck. And then when it goes in the truck, we'll final prime and paint it then. But right now, we're going to weld the tabs in. We're going to weld the tabs in right there, and then we're going to be fine. So I'm going to show you what this actually does. Okay, this is where the PCM is going to go. The harness is going to wrap around. You have, forgive me, I have this all taped up right now because we're going to be putting this bad boy in. And then the relays will be going down here. This will go into this module here. That's my tack wire. This wire here will go right to the ignition. This harness here is going to go through the firewall. This is O2. And then we have over here fuel pump. That fuel pump wire is going to run up to the corner of the cowl and go from there. So this is what we have. And this, this here is also for the Dakota Digital. It will fit right on there. So it will be a nice board. And then also we have a ground set up here. So it will be nice to, to have a ground system. All right, as we get in, climb in the truck. You'll see here this open cavity here. This is where that plate's going to get welded in. So we're going to weld it up to up under here. And then we're going to weld it down into here. So I'm going to clean the area up and put that in right now. Okay, so this is where we are at. I tack welded the board in that I fabricated and then everything mounts onto it. So you see the PCM, you see the breakout board for the Dakota Digital Dash and the buzzer for it. These are the relays and this is going to be our main ground. That will be our main ground for our AC, our radio and anything else that needs to be grounded. We'll just have a nice central location. Ain't going to hurt anything. It works out really good on Hanks. We've done it for many years. And then that little white wire there, that's our tack wire and that will go into this box. Our next big thing We'll be taking this harness and getting it all put into here. Now what I'm doing is I'm just grooming all the wires so I get the correct lengths, put it all together, and then I'm going to take everything apart in components because everything's a plug and play. This unplugs from this and then over here, everything will unplug and then it comes out and then I can finish up tack welding that plate in there and then body working all that and painting that up underneath the dash because we paint inside out and up and down. All right, let's continue on. So here we're at the 53 Ford. This is Doyce's truck. And this is where the factory e-brake goes, right there. And then it bolts right there, okay? And it's a handbrake lever. Let me show you what we got. So this is the factory parking brake from 1953. It's got a ratcheting lever and it swivels up here on the cam. And that's where the original, uh, where the e-brake used to go to, okay? We can't have that with the low car cable. We have a new low car cable. We're going to adapt it to this. Rather than bastardize this bad boy, I came up with a different plan. All right. So as you see... It swivels up and then you release it here. So you click it up and that will lock it, obviously. And you can see how it goes. Well, I didn't want to destroy this thing and if the owner ever wanted to pull this out and get an actual foot brake pedal, he can take this and sell this and it'll be a nice original piece unmodified. So what I came up with is uh, different brackets I made and a modified clevis so I can adapt the low car cable into this. I'll show you how it's done. You put that piece in there, put the bolt through. Now these the hardware on this is just temporary because all I want to do is just make sure it works right. Then I got the retaining plate. The retaining plate here will uh, this is where the cable will go through. Okay so what we're gonna do put the retaining plate on. This washer, see it's got a recess in there from the factory. That washer centers the bolt so it doesn't move the bolt. Put the plate on. The plate gets captured. Of 
course, we'll lock this down. This is all temporary hardware. Now, we can put our clevis in. So we're gonna get it. Their wire. And then that wire is gonna go through the modified clevis. So I welded up the hole and then I drilled it out a little bit. Okay. We're gonna put it through that hole. And like I said, this is just a temporary mock-up of it. And that'll fit in there. That goes in like that. That goes like that. So I got a little bit more throw on this. And it works just fine. So, pretty neat, doesn't destroy the original part, just adds to the part, and it makes our low car cable work perfect. Okay, and I just quickly put this in, and you can see that's how it's going to work. And we use the factory setup, and it works just well. All right. These boxes are starting to accumulate here. All right, we have a master cylinder in today and the proportioning valve for Doyce's truck. Took the other master cylinder off because that had a one inch bore on it. The one inch bore diameter in the master cylinder, we need a 15 16 bore. Um, the reason being is we need more pressure, less volume. So we have the proportioning valve. We're going to go check this out. And I matched this up for a disc, disc brake system. And it should be the correct outlet. Of course, they staple it up underneath the paper. Okay. There we go. There's the proportioning valve. Now, just a typical common proportioning valve. And you notice these fittings are a little bit different than on these. This is the smaller one, and these are the larger diameter one. Uh, so that means nothing to me. That's not the big deal. The big deal is actually back here. This is a one inch bore. And I'm gonna show you the difference. This is the unit we got with the truck. This is the unit I had to purchase. We've had to do this on Hank's truck too because the master cylinder just doesn't seem to get us to a certain percentage of fluid pressure, not volume. Um, and what it does is it gets the pedal pretty hard. So you'll see the difference from there to there. See the, the thickness of here to the bore of that? That's the difference. This 
will give us a lot more pressure, might extend the pedal down a little bit further, but we don't care about that. We just need the amount of pressure to get the vehicle to actually, if we had a panic, stop it, it'll lock up. So I wanted to show you the differences. There is a difference in pressure versus volume. This will give us more pressure, less volume. This bad boy here will give you more volume, less pressure. All depends on your application. So we're going to get this thing painted up to look like this. We're going to put it on the vehicle. This comes with a bleeding kit. And you got this little doohickey back here. Okay, and what that does is that'll go right in there and that'll come for the power brake booster. Alrighty, new master cylinder is on. Yeah, baby. Looking good. And there is our relay setup for the fan and the AC compressor, and we fused it. And we terminated the connector here. And then we're gonna run these wires into there, finish them out. The main feed wire goes down to the battery down underneath the truck on the frame. And then this here is gonna be our, where our PCM and all our data goes for this. Belts on, terminated the wire for the fan. Of course, nothing's permanent yet because we gotta pull this apart to paint it. And we just stayed busy. We're finishing that up. That's the control unit for the AC. We'll be wiring that all up in. And then wiring that blue wire into that unit there. So that'll work. We have our binary pressure switch for our AC. That's wired. Put in some tubing. And then we transferred over the connector on the top here for our distributor wire. So for a coil wire, excuse me. And then we extended the harness for the coil wires themselves. And then we neatly wrapped everything down into here. And it goes right into there. Okay, so this is where we're at with the battery. We got the new terminals on, and these are lug styles that we can actually just slide the terminal in and then lock them down. Pretty nice. Kind of like them. They work really well. And this will be here. These wires that you see that are already kind of through here. This is going to the starter. That's our two gauge. And then we have our six gauge right here. That feeds the fuse block. This is our PCM wiring that's got to be dedicated to the battery always. Anytime you do a Holly or a Edelbrock, especially like what we're doing, we're doing a ProFlow 4, they say specifically in the instructions, make sure it goes to the battery. So that's the thing. Oh, we got a spaghetti mess here, but it's not that bad. This here is actually groomed and ready to go to the board for the dash, the Dakota Digital. So all these terminals, these uh, wires are for those connections. So the dash output to the dash will now read everything. Directionals, brake lights, everything. The ignition terminals are all here, they're done. Brake switch is done and labeled. And the blue wire is the third brake light, by the way. PCM connectors here, they'll go through that firewall opening right down in there. I know it's a little tricky to see her right there. There it is. So um, we're going to put these through, and they just plug and play right to the harness on the engine. This here is now terminated. This is the plug and play for the stereo. And there's not many wires because we're doing two output RCA jacks that will run down here to the amp that will be there. So we don't need anything else. And then we'll just run speaker wire back and we'll put the speakers up in the kick panels and in the corners of the cab. Okay, so that's the spaghetti mess update on the F100. Well, hey everybody, I just wanted to show you some quick updates of what's going on on Doyce's 53F100. I appreciate your time checking in. Even though it's not a lot of great footage on this, at least we know that we are steady working on this truck. Once we get this truck to a point of completion, a certain point where we have all the plumbing done, exhaust, everything, such and whatnot, um, we're going to be putting this over in a flat because the GTO is coming in and we're going to get the GTO running. And then in the process of that, we're going to take the cab off the chassis and this to paint the inside of the cab and the firewall, put it back down the last time and then final it out. Everyone, thanks so much for your time. We will see you very soon in the next video. Take care, everyone.